Uh, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank the organizing committee for having me in this uh, wonderful event uh, after uh, free some, being all together after some time and also Terumo for giving me the opportunity to address uh, the topic. I'm going to start with uh, a, a, a patient that uh, often comes to our uh, cath labs anymore, 78 years old female. She had a liver cirrhosis with portal hypertension with ligated esophageal varices. She had an NSTEMI at a certain point and was catheterized for that, which uh, revealed uh, very complex coronary artery disease involved in the ostia of uh, the uh, circumflex and DLAD. It was a bifurcation 011 with Medina, needle LAD 99%, RCA, CTO, an ejection fraction of 40%, and she was uh, receiving the medication that you see. And the lady was turned out for, from four cardiac centers, and finally she was referred to us for uh, three vessel PCI. You see here the angiogram uh, revealing the lesions that I just said before and the collateral filling to the right coronary artery. And this is the occlusion of the right coronary. So, as I said, we face mainly uh, uh, more and more often these procedures. And, uh, over time, comorbidities and complex lesions in the cath lab is increasing, and we know that the comorbidity uh, 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 is uh, an increased risk of complications, including bleeding complication, as you can see here. And the more uh, the complex the procedures and the comorbidity indexes, then you see that the bleeding complications are increasing exponentially from 57% to 2.4 times to 4.2 times based on that. And we know that if we do nothing in these patients, they do very bad. And if we are able to offer them uh, any kind of intervention, then uh, we're definitely improving uh, uh, their uh, survival status. Uh, oh, and uh, we, we also see that um, the complete revascularization in these patients, it's not only to do something for them, but if you're able to completely revascularize these patients, then they have a great benefit, uh, both for mortality, but also the other kind of uh, major adverse event, and mortality and morbidity increasing with the degree of incomplete revascularization. Often and uh, very recently came into our, uh, let's say, uh, uh, glossary, the uh, complex high-risk indicated procedures, the CHIP concept. And you see that in that we have the complex, or the complexity of coronary artery disease, we have patient comorbidities, and we have also very compromised left ventricles that they might need uh, the use of ventricular support devices. And uh, also the complexity of coronary artery disease, which one of these parameters uh, goes uh, to the entire history of interventional cardiology since the beginning. But you see that at the top of the pyramid, we have the calcifications that needs rotablation or any kind of uh, calcification treatment available today, the complex bifurcations, the left main, and on the very, very top, the CTO procedures. So we need the tools for that, and uh, today I'm going to address as to why certain devices, they have benefits uh, compared to others uh, on that. And uh, uh, one of these devices is the Ultimaster Tansai, which uh, has special characteristics and features that they fit very nicely the treatment of these patients that I said they're coming more and more in our table, which is uh, uh, the Stand the Ultimaster platform the clinical data that I'm going to present in the directions of the bifurcation CTO that it was involved in this patient that I uh, talked about. The improved deliverability made uh, both on the delivery system but on the stand design and of course uh, a broad size matrix. And the characteristics of the stand is an innovative, uh, innovative abluminal bioresorbable drug coating applied in a gradient to reduce the risk of polymer cracking and delamination. And you can appreciate that here in the figure that, that the joints that uh, there is increased risk of cracking, then there is no polymer. So there is uh, the uh, polylactic uh, uh, carpolactone, very difficult for interventional cardiologists, added to the uh, PDLLA uh, polymer in, in, in order to increase its elasticity and avoid complications with cracking of the polymer. There is a short-term polymer exposure which mirrors biological response which promotes a rapid vascular repair within three to four months and of course uh, it's a thin strut uh, stent with eight microns with optimal conformability to reduce the mechanical stress on the vessel wall. 
And the delivery system with the TANSEI technology that came has been substantially improved. Uh, there is an uh, updated exit port to ensure a smooth and balanced transition. There is an advanced soft technology to maximize transmission force and king resistance and an innovative tip to maximize the deliverability of the stand. On the top of it, the Ultimaster has uh, overexpansion capabilities that are very useful, both of left main by also in bifurcations. And you can see a stand that it is 2.25 uh, millimeters that it can be expanded up to 4.5 millimeters. So you imagine the range of capabilities that this gives in bifurcations and tapering vessels. Beyond the key features supporting the vascular repair, there are also clinical evidence on vascular repair uh, with good strut coverage uh, as early, which reaches 85% in one month and 95% uh, um, uh, in three months. These are data from the discovery one to three trial. Fast endothelial recovery and less inflammation and maturing healthy endothelium over the stent. And of course, uh, we have data now that I'm going to present uh, that uh, there is C marking uh, to reduce the double antiplatelet medication hybrid in Greek patients uh, up to uh, one month. And the stent, the Ultimaster, has been tested in, in a very big range of uh, different types in complex PCI, in bifurcations, left main, high bleeding risk, acute coronary syndromes, clonic total occlusions, and multivessel disease. And you see that more of 50,000 patients, they have been included in the trial, providing a very robust platform of uh, evaluation of the stent in all the scenario that I told you. Uh, here are the data that I was telling you from the Discovery 1 to 3 trial uh, that summarizes the fast and complete uh, endothelialization of, uh, of the stent from 1 to 3 months, almost uh, complete uh, endothelialization and coverage. The Century 2 trial, which was a large prospective interventional multicenter study, which compared, which was randomized the Ultimaster with the science, so and confirmed the non inferiority of, uh, of uh, the um, device uh, compared to the Zion's uh, stand. And you see here up to five years that uh, the patient orientated clinical endpoints, uh, reconfirming the non-inferiority of the stand, but the majority uh, of the components of uh, the composite endpoint they are in the direction of non-significant but numerical favor of uh, the Ultimaster uh, stand compared to Zion's. And uh, uh, this, uh, in the Ultimaster trial, which was another real-world registry with uh, around 37,000 patients, uh, so representing the routine clinical practice, uh, then uh, composite endpoint of TLF, and you can read what it is, uh, over um, a, a wild geographic span, which allows a meaningful analysis of all geographical differences. And what uh, we found from these, I'm going to focus on, from these data that they're very extensive only on the bifurcation uh, and the CTO uh, because we got significant information. Four and a half thousand patients with a TLF of 5.1 showing the excellent performance of the stent in real world uh, for bifurcations. 80% of these procedures were done uh, with uh, transradial access and single standing was the dominant uh, figure. You see here uh, the different components uh, of the e-registry and uh, the very low range of events, both on safety, efficacy, and of course the composite endpoint. From the same registry also, uh, around uh, 1,700 patients, uh, they had the chronic total occlusions. And uh, uh, from these, also very favorable clinical outcomes with very low rates of uh, event. You see a TLF only of 3.3%. And stent thrombosis of only 1% that showed during this meeting quite a lot of these procedures showing the complexity and what is going on with this um, uh, subset of patients. And more data except the registry are existing in this field of chronic total occlusions with another two uh, uh, studies, the CTO multicenter registry and uh, the ULIS registry subgroup analysis of this. And you see here in the one-year outcomes of the CTO multicenter registry that with propensity analysis, so Ultimaster was implanted in 131 patients and the, uh, statistically a matched group. And you see uh, here again the non-inferiority but numerically uh, lower um, events with uh, uh, the Ultimaster confirming also a, an excellent performance uh, in this subset of patients but also you see here the one-year clinical outcomes from the Ulisse Registry, the CTO subgroup, 
again, with very low um, rates of events in a, a very complex uh, patient scenario. The other thing that came very recently, and I think everybody is aware about uh, the entire, uh, I think, uh, uh, Society of Interventional Cardiology is dealing now with the high bleeding risk and the more complex patients as this one that uh, I, I told you earlier. So I've already presented that uh, the stent has very favorable characteristics with only a bluminate coating with very high rates of endothelialization. And uh, uh, so the uh, high strut uh, coverage at uh, six months. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, there was a, a smaller study. Uh, the model uh, uses uh, uh, study with high bleeding risk patients uh, that they show that uh, excellent uh, results with uh, three months double antiplatelet medication with the stents. And this was all the background uh, for uh, really designing the master DAP trial, uh, DAPT trial that has been recently presented. And uh, uh, the, 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 the trial actually followed this unmet need that is existing in interventional cardiology that uh, there is no guidance about, or there was no guidance about the appropriate duration of dual antiplatelet therapy in pa patients uh, in high risk for bleeding after implantation of drug eluting stents. And uh, studies with one month of dual antiplatelet medication after death implantation suggested that this regimen might mitigate bleeding without also compromising the safety. And based on that, uh, the, the study has been designed, which was an investigator-initiated randomized study with uh, 4,500 patients, 100 post, uh, hospitals over 30 countries. It was all CAMERS trial in high bleeding risk patients. I'm not going to get the details of uh, the, what it uh, means, high bleeding. And of course, uh, the, the trial was randomized with abbreviated uh, up to one month versus prolonged dual antiplatelet medication. It had uh, uh, three uh, 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 endpoints, uh, the net adverse clinical outcomes that they proved uh, as design was designed non-inferiority, the major adverse cardiac events again with similar ischemic risk and again non-inferiority met, and then there was uh, a superiority on the safety uh, endpoint which was the uh, uh, clinically relevant non-major bleeding and actually, the, 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 it was proven uh, that there is a superiority as by design of the trial. And you see here the different uh, components uh, of uh, the outcomes uh, based on that, which I have previously described. So, uh, in conclusion, this trial, what shows is that uh, uh, it meets all three uh, co-primary endpoints. One month uh, DAPT after implantation of Ultimaster family deaths because it was both the initial Ultimaster and also the TANSE, does not increase the ischemic risk but reduces the bleeding risk in high bleeding risk patients. Patients with acute coronary syndrome and patients who underwent complex or multivessel PCI were included, very few exclusion criteria. It supports the reduction of DAPT duration to one month after implantation of Ultimaster family deaths in a broad cohort of high bleeding risk patients. And master DAPT included patient high breathing risk who had undergone implantation with the Ultimaster and the Ultimaster Tansei family stands. And the results may not extend, that's very important, to patients that who are not at high bleeding risk or who have received other type of stents. We cannot extrapolate because the technology in the device is a unique technology that it doesn't uh, really reflect the other uh, stent uh, platforms. Having presented all these data, I'm just going to finish this presentation by just uh, showing how this patient was treated. There was a predilatation of the circumflex, and one Ultimaster Tanse was uh, implanted in the direction of the circumflex to the left main ostium, as you can appreciate here. Quick access was taken uh, easily through the struts of the stand to the LAD and uh, then pre-dilatation of the middle AD, implantation of another Ultimaster stand in the middle AD over the diagonal branch that remained nicely open without compromised flow, and then the bifurcation treatment was concluded with TM protrusion technique. You can appreciate this implantation of another Ultimaster stand, kissing balloon. The result after that, you see nice patency in all vessels, pot, through the struts of the stand of the Ultimaster uh, and uh, Sion wire, 
was easily advanced retrogradely to the right coronary artery. I need one minute more, please. One more minute, please. Upload the slides again, please. And a wire was uh, externalized, you see here, and then after predilatation of the CT of the right coronary artery, another three ultimaster stents were implanted, and complete revascularization was achieved in these complex patients that involved bifurcation and CTO treatment simultaneously, aiming to complete revascularization. And I think that's where we're standing today. You see also another view of the complete revascularization in this uh, case. So what is the Ultimaster TANSE premises? Best-in-class deliverability, trackability, and crossability, leading to superb acute procedural outcomes, thin struts in patients with multivessel left main bifurcation, CTO lesions, and comorbidities, stent scaff scaffold tested in numerous clinical trials in different clinical scenarios, leading to superior long-term clinical outcomes and over-expansion capabilities, both for bifurcation and the left main. As a take home message from this presentation about the complex anatomy, the high bleeding risk patients, just, just please for the last slide, last slide, just to give the message of the talk, is that there is a very large underserved patient population that can benefit from revascularization. And with all the lessons learned, I think our awareness about this patient is increasing. The patient selection from the complex high risk indicated procedures High breathing risk and CTO-PCI is based on anatomical complexity, patient comorbidities, and LV function. Rather than focusing on low-risk patients who may be easy to treat, we need to focus upon high-risk patients who have the most to gain. These patients will be more commonly seen in our field as the healthcare system evolves. And the development of comprehensive and thoughtful specialists trained with advanced technical and cognitive skills to assess and treat these patients is clearly needed. Thank you.